Japan is a country full of ancient architecture, still to be explained by modern fields of study, with much of the method of construction indicative of lost knowledge. We have in the past covered a number of these ancient anomalies, yet after receiving a message from one of our viewers, we have yet again been provided with a lead which has resulted in us adding to this long list of ancient wonders. With a smorgasbord of previously unnoticed ancient masonry which is still in existence at a number of ancient sites throughout the country, many of these sites, thanks to the tremendous efficiency of their original constructors, are still in use to this day. Mostly labeled as castles, these additional discoveries further corroborates a hypothesis we presented nearly two years ago a posit of a past mega-metropolis, or now lost super-civilization, having once called Japan home. Chris Gorman had previously visited Shuri Castle in Okinawa with his family, and after watching the studies regarding masonry on the channel, recalled seeing this same, now lost method of advanced stone building at the ancient site. He stated, and I quote, I'm writing to you after watching your video regarding masonry. I recognize that this same masonry was present at Shuri Castle in Okinawa, Japan, which was once made from volcanic rock. Here are some pictures that I took of the castle. Some areas were completely destroyed in the Okinawa assault of World War II, but there are also areas which survived the barrage. I witnessed rock walls and pathways that had mossy lichens, some of which taking upwards of thousands of years to form. Heavy pitting was also present upon the rocks demonstrating significant erosion I didn't notice until recently." End quote. Thanks to Chris's message, I investigated the site along with a number of surrounding sites and found that not only is Shuri Castle littered with this amazing lost technique of stone building, countless other ancient castles and forts across the country also share these same characteristics. With the same synonymous incline found at Saxawaman, which has shown the walls to have not only been a formidable barrier for invaders, but allow them to also survive natural disasters such as large earthquakes. The castle of Nakagusuku in the villages of Nakagusuku and Kitanakugutsu, also found upon the island of Okinawa in Japan, is only second in size to Shuri and predictably is academically claimed as the work of distant ancestors, falling within currently permitted history. Known as the Gusuku, this title, however, is similar to that of pre -Incan. It is a name given to an unknown group, which is clearly a lost civilization. Yet, due to the forbidden nature of such investigative endeavors within academic fields, is simply a name which allows academia to dodge any explanation for their origins. Gusuku often refers to the castles or fortresses of the Ryukyu archipelago, which we have now realized are all remnants of a past highly capable, technologically advanced lost civilization with the origins of which among those who have the courage to study such unexplainable ruins, remains a controversial subject, one forbidden by funded institutional individuals from discussing. In the archaeology of the current Okinawa prefecture, the Gusuku period refers to the archaeological period believed to have followed the, quote, Mound of Shells period, all located in the Ryukyu Kingdom which the channel now strongly believes as a whole is evidence of a past, now academically concealed megametropolis, which were all the work of the same now lost civilization, and were all connected parts of this same settlement. Regardless of their controversial nature, many Gusuku ruins of the Okinawa Island are fortunately listed as World Heritage Sites by UNESCO, listed under the name of the Gusuku Sites and associated cultural properties of Ryukyu Kingdom, they are undoubtedly highly compelling. We have in the past covered countless incredible and compelling ruins which can be found within Japan, indeed all over the world, upon which we continue to find connecting features which not only suggest there was once a global, ancient, highly advanced civilization, but the chance that these architectural techniques came about at the same time in history, the world over, by coincidence, is so slim that many said features, we feel, can instead only be seen as corroborating evidence of their past existence. Metal clamping techniques, enormous ancient megaliths, false doors, and the as yet to be fully understood polygonal masonry techniques have now been discovered the world over, and Japan is of no exception. Along with the polygonal masonry found upon the foundations of many temple sites, there is also the ancient fortresses of Okinawa which also display the same uncanny ability as other sites globally, constructed of seemingly random-shaped stones 
perfectly placed atop one another. Katsurin Castle, Zakimi Castle, among many other Gusuku castles or ancient fortresses found upon the Ryuku Islands within Japan, all contain this same ancient masonry technique, exhibiting this now lost knowledge and thus lost civilization's know-how. Although many of the sites are claimed as restorations, any explanation as to how this ancient masonry technique was replicated within modern history remains unexplained. We must then presume that the ancient sites which exhibit this lost technique have remained intact for untold millennia and have subsequently been misdated as constructed within known New World antiquities. Found upon such ancient sites, located within Peru, Egypt, Greece, Turkey, Lebanon, even as far as the notoriously remote Easter Island, these sites all exhibiting the same lost masonry technique. How can we continue to take these discoveries for granted, dismissed by academics, simply due to modern paradigm, absent any logical argument to explain or indeed disregard this proof of a now lost yet once global super-civilization having once been responsible? They must continue to rely on the Bering Strait theory of human migration and ignore any site which is indicative of not only earlier construction but matching characteristics with other sites the world over, which according to said theory, simply could not have been visited by ancient civilizations, long argued as a feat which ancients were incapable of. The evidence which contradicts these claims, however, can be found still in existence upon these ancient sites. How old are the ancient fortresses of Ryuku Islands, or indeed the other polygonal sites throughout Japan and the rest of the world? Who were responsible for these incredible sites? We feel simply dismissing the evidence which shows they were the work of the same civilization is not only illogical, but is a great example of the ignorance of mainstream-funded institutes in regard to a possible lost chapter in human history. It is a journey of discovery which we find highly compelling. We have covered several anomalies of recent, which some fields of study would rather be kept silent, often attempting to dismiss such objects as a fraud or, if structural, as a natural formation. And our next topic is no exception. Just off the coast of Yanaguni, among the Ryuku Islands of Japan, is a place once passionately argued as a natural formation by countless academic scholars, now all but surrendered to the truth. And once you are introduced to the sheer enormity of this city, you will begin to realize why some were so keen for the world to remain ignorant of this place. One of the largest pyramid structures found here is over 600 feet wide and 900 feet tall. Comparatively, the tallest of Egypt's being a mere 450 feet, making these submerged and suppressed pyramids almost twice as large. Due to the public debunking efforts experienced, the majority of the world's population have subsequently overlooked this place, this regardless of the exploratory dives made upon the buildings. Dives resulting in the discovery of tool marks and carvings made upon the stone, archaeologically indicating that they were indeed constructed, the evidence has clearly been compelling, meaning honest professionals, including Teruki Ishii, professor of geology at Tokyo University, have determined that the city's submergence occurred at the end of the last ice age, which was around 10,000 years ago meaning these ruins predate this event by some considerable time. If this is accepted to be the case, however, billions of history books would have to be reprinted, taking into account an advanced Eastern culture, among many others. Several intriguing artifacts have been retrieved from around the city. Strange stones, which display as yet unknown petroglyphs, along with several strange stone tools. Additionally, an enormous stone monolith, adorned with what many have suspected was a human face, has been discovered at the foot of the largest pyramid. Was this what the original Sphinx looked like upon Earth? After mounting evidence in favor of the enormous formations being an extremely ancient pyramid complex, it seems academia finally buckled to the data. 
National Geographic running a story confirming that the city does indeed exist, and conveniently presenting an explanation complete with a scenario involving a candidate civilization. One must wonder, why was this quote likely proposition now put forward? Why was this so preposterous before being forced to concede in regard to the ancient city's original origins? Stating, quote, some experts believe that the structures could be all that's left of Mu, a fabled Pacific civilization rumored to have vanished beneath the waves. Although they forget to mention that this specific landmass has remained at the same level since before the last ice age. Just who were these ancient people? What amazing secrets are they still awaiting to tell us? We will, of course, keep you posted. Because I have been the team's biggest skeptic, I was kind of prepared of finding just a stone. For me, it has been an amazing experience, I must say. There is a smorgasbord of ancient antiquities, along with the many objects left thereafter, which has fueled a heated debate smoldering within the field of history, fought out and kept smoldering at its core by two opposing sides of considerable clout. Those in support of, and it must be noted, heavily funded by current academic paradigms, 
and those with incredibly sturdy examples of supporting evidence of now lost ancient high technology, along with vast areas of antiquity itself and the actions undertaken within for which their academic opposition simply cannot produce an answer for. These objects, or uparts particularly, becoming thorns in the side of currently taught historical theorems. Academia in response have, through competent research, the re-examining of witness testimonies, along with the grilling of some of these said witnesses, even polygraphy being undertaken upon the supposed discoverers of these items all in an active attempt to disprove this alternative timeline of history which they claim as impossible, a history which these objects are displaying existed. Remarkable relics, easily identifiable as human implements, have been found in nearly every place you wouldn't expect to find them. Artifacts liberated during mining activities, found in Jurassic strata, the Wedge of Awood found deep in prehistoric sediments, or a doll machine pumped from depths untouched or, more importantly, undisturbed for many millions of years. Entombed, these remarkable things, just waiting for modern man to again show them the light of day. Ruins found in geographical locations, which have, geologically, proved by another academic field as having been built, then subsequently submerged far before historical academic opinion on human origin, and indeed, human development timelines as a whole allows. A complete contradiction of conclusion, resulting from a blatant cover-up of the past. Additionally, these mentioned items, we believe, are likely a mere handful of examples found over the years, such as the iron mask we recently covered found deep within a coal mine by the lady who came forward with images and the testimony after her father, the finder of the artifacts passing, having kept his find secret. Yet another peculiar area of ancient curiosities, in contrast to being unearthed, were plunged into it. The most interesting of which, in our opinion, being that of the swords in the stones. The sword of Okomfo Onaki being one such artifact. The once mythical leader of the Ashanti people. As a symbol of its power, and to signify peace and unity among the Ashanti Empire. According to local history, the sword was plunged by him into the ground, this occurring some 300 years ago. He pronounced the sword to be immovable, and, bizarrely, it has indeed remained unmoved. There have been many attempts to liberate the sword, including well-known figures such as Muhammad Ali, who attempted to remove the sword in 1994. The sword has even been visited by the Queen of England in 1961, though whether she attempted to lift the sword is unknown. History is full of mysterious anomalies which simply cannot be explained, the sword of Okomfo being one of them, as of which it is an artifact we find highly compelling.